Hey, this is Rick Terry, your main real estate guy. Taking an opportunity here, it's uh, kind of the end of the day, and I think, thought I'd give you a little tour of the, the homestead now that a lot of our, our uh, plants are in, in bloom, show you what's happening. Well, about a, little, about a month ago, we still had snow and cold here, so, so uh, we're right into you know, the first big major nectar flows here for my honeybees, and there's a lot happening, so let's, uh, let's take a little walk. So over here, you can see the bees are pretty busy today. We got rain coming for the next two days, and they know it. They know it's coming, uh, but they're they're busily gathering pollen and nectar, and uh, we're building up for for really the first really major uh, nectar flow, which will be forthcoming. Usually, dandelions are the the first real major one. Uh, the, the dandelions and my apple trees are going to probably hit about the same time as far as blossoms and whatnot, so they'll be very busy. I do need to get inside uh, a couple of the hives today. I had put, uh, I had to feed a couple of them uh, late into the spring because uh, they were a little light in stores and I fed them some fondant and in order to do that I had to put a shim at the top of the hive and so I'm, I'm going to go in there and remove the shim uh, so the hive will be ready just to, to make it through uh, to the through summer. If I leave the shim in place, what they'll end up doing is just making a little bit of comb up there and it'll just make a mess. So I'm gonna go in there and take that out here today. Here's a close up of uh, honeybees gathering water. We got a little bit of water on the rim of this barrel and they're uh, taking in quite a bit of water right, right this time of year. I, I've got a bird bath on water that I'm just gonna use to keep filled with water uh, to uh, uh, keep bees from from drowning. You can see in the barrel down there, I got some I got to fish out. Uh, they're still alive, but we'll have to dry them out. Um, but to try to quit losing bees in the water barrel, I'm gonna, I've got a bird bath coming, so hopefully it'll be here soon. Give them a couple of puffs of smoke to let them know that I'm about ready to go inside. See how this comes out. You always want to try working on your bees from behind the entrance. It's less disturbing to them than being right in front of the doorway. Trying to smoke these bees down. There's a lot of bees up here where the shim was. They've eaten all the fondant that I had given them. So it's high time to take that off. We'll, uh, we'll pop this off. And Yeah, bird's eye view. What's going on in the hive? You can really see all the bees. Yeah. So I got the shim off, and now I'm gonna cover this out. Smoke them down a little bit more. And then coming back up. Try to leave them to their own devices most of the summer. I'm not having to mess 
So that shim is gone. Let's work with this one here. Oh, I just got smacked in the back of the head by an angry bee. We'll try not to disturb them too much here. Yeah. These glue everything together with a substance called propolis. So you need to use a hive tool to kind of put things out. There's just a little bit of fondant left in this one. I'm gonna actually remove it just to be done with this. You really don't need it at this point. There we go. Let's get the fondant right off. Set that dip now. Let's hope this goes down. Looking good. Back up. There. If you look closely, you can see them coming in with pollen, but uh, very busy. So this is Rick Terrio, your main real estate guide on location here at the Family Homestead right here in Millinocket, Maine. Here in our center island, we've got uh, several varieties of blueberry bushes that uh, I've uh, geez, they got to be 10 years old now, and uh, they're doing pretty well. I've got one variety that seemed to seem to struggle with the winter a little bit, I'm, you know, but it's uh, it's coming coming along okay. I may have to trim it back a little bit, but but I don't know if you can kind of see all those potential blueberries, all those blossoms. These uh, some of these bushes are just loaded uh, with uh, with blossoms. And the bees have been, uh, honeybee, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, bumblebees especially have been working these. But I, I find that uh, my honeybees will work the blueberries, but uh, in general, the, the major pollinator for me for these are bumblebees. This apple tree here, I'm not sure. I'll give it another year, but uh, this is a uh, black oxford. It's an old variety of apple. I planted that. Uh, maybe three years ago now, and it struggles. It uh, it's very slow to get going in the spring. Uh, it will green up, but uh, uh, it's got it's just not thriving. So I'm gonna baby it along the summer and see what happens. But I may have to uh, may have to re remove it and replace it with something else. Over here, this tree here that's all nice in bloom is my wife's favorite eating apple, it's a honey crisp, and it's heavily laden with, uh, with blossoms that are, that are opening up right now, and it's doing pretty well. Um, the, the tree, oh, maybe, maybe five or six years ago, uh, died back, and I, I had a major limb that was still alive, but above that limb it, it had died, so I cut, the, I cut the central leader off, and I've been training the tree ever since trying to get it back to some, some sort of reasonable shape. And it's coming along pretty good and it produces fruit. We had uh, a, few, a few apples last year. This year it looks, looks like we may get a pretty a bumper crop. Again, this is a honey crisp. I planted a few grow bags with some extra tomato plants and uh, they seem to be doing okay. Lilac bush is coming along. It'll be blossomed here soon. 
This tree here is a young tree. This is Ashmead's kernel. I've never eaten one, uh, but from my reading online of that particular cultivar of apple, uh, it's supposed to be one of the best dessert apples uh, ever grown, Ashmead's kernel. And this, uh, this tr I've got two of these trees, one here and one up by my wind turbine, and they both have blossoms on, on them. This one here has more blossoms than the other, but we, it looks like we ought to get an apple or two uh, from, from this tree this year. And this is one of my favorite fruits, and I'm, I, I love, like this tree a lot. This is a peach tree. Uh, we can grow peaches up here. This is a zone four uh, agricultural area. It does get cold, uh, but uh, this, this tree here is a very hardy variety, and it is just loaded uh, with peach blossoms. Last year, uh, the, the bloom period is extremely short, and we didn't have very good pollination. It did set some fruit, but the red squirrels uh, took each and every peach while they were, while they were still green. Uh, and so we got zero fruit from this tree last year due to red squirrel predation. This is a different variety of peach. This, uh, this one over here is a yellow peach. This one here is a white fleshed peach. Uh, it uh, usually bears some fruit. Again, last year, um, Due to red squirrels, we, we received absolutely zero fruit from our peach trees. This wild cherry tree kind of dominates my, my yard and the bees are working, working those blossoms, but that thing is just loaded with, uh, with nectar producing flowers at the moment, so I'm letting my bees work it and hopefully, uh, hopefully they'll make some honey. And over here, we have one of New England's first crops that, that come along in the springtime, and that's rhubarb. And coincidentally, right next to it, are strawberries. And if you live in New England, you've probably at least had an opportunity to try strawberry rhubarb pie, one of my favorites. So we're up uh, on the hill by my, by my wind turbine. which is where the bulk of my orchard is located. And we'll take a little orchard walk. This is another ash meets kernel. We spoke about that down, down below. This tree's a little larger, but it doesn't have as many blossoms on it. But nonetheless, it, uh, it ought to set some fruit this year, hopefully. This tree here is a crab apple. And if you're gonna grow apples, a crab apple is a good universal pollinator to have. At least one, I've got three. And uh, uh, that helps with cross pollination because uh, most varieties of apples require another variety of apple in order to produce fruit. And that is cross pollination. And so uh, again, uh, usually crab apples are a universal pollinator for many varieties of apple. Over here is a Cortland apple tree, and it's pretty well loaded with blossoms. And most, many of them are open, and uh, so they're, it's close proximity to the uh, crab apple tree, lends itself nicely to cross pollination when the pollinators come from tree to tree and the wind blows, uh, blows pollen from one tree to another. This tree here that's kind of doesn't have any blossoms on it at all. Last year produced a great deal of fruit. This is a Lodi. It's a yellow transparent apple. Uh, I had a challenge with it last year. It had a tremendous infestation with uh, woolly aphids. And if, if you could put in the comment section, if you know of a way to, to uh, get rid of woolly aphids, I'd, I'd like to hear what you do. Cause I've, I've tried a few different varieties. I've, uh, of treatment, uh, but they're very persistent. And what they did is they ate or sucked the life out of every fruiting bud on this tree. So I will, I will not get any fruit this year at all. So the tr tree right now is in a period of recovery. 
Um, but uh, the woolly aphid caused, caused that calamity. And this tree next to it is another crabapple tree and it also suffered with woolly aphids last year and it is the only crabapple tree that I've yet to, oh, excuse me, take that back. I've got two sets of flowering blossoms on it. So, but it's, that's not many in comparison to the crabapple tree that we just looked at in the beginning, which is really loaded. So the woolly aphids are very destructive to the, your fruiting buds, which set the fall before the fall and spring when they open uh, for pollination. This is another crab apple tree and it's got quite a few blossoms on it. One of the things we do with crab apples is uh, we make crab apple pepper jelly. Crab apple has naturally is naturally high in pectin and it, uh, it makes uh, makes it crab apple pepper jelly and, and any other apple jelly uh, pretty pretty well. This is this variety of apple is an old English eating apple. This is Cox's, Cox's Orange Pippin, and it, uh, it's got quite a few blossoms on it this year. We got about a half dozen pieces of fruit off it last year. Hopefully we'll get a few more. It was very good. I liked, I enjoyed the taste. It has some tropical flavors in it. Uh, I did uh, some kind of rodent. I th I'm assuming it was probably a raccoon climbed it last year and, and did some, some damage to the bark. I patched it up and it seems to have recovered pretty well. This tree next to it here is a Macintosh and it's got quite a few blossoms on it and should, should bear some fruit. We had a pretty decent crop of Macintosh apples last year from this tree. But this tree here that is just magnificent before us is, uh, is a Zestar apple. And it is a fabulous apple for all purposes, cooking, eating, cider making. It's just a very, very good apple. This tree has produced bountiful crops year after year for us. Uh, and uh, it uh, seems to be somewhat resistant to, uh, to scab and other, other diseases. Here's a, here's a honeybee working, doing a little pollination. I took a, a limb off of that last last fall, and I and I'm cloning it here. So this will be another Zestar tree. Uh, the bud graft took last fall, and I I actually I had three grafts on it, and they all took. So I cut two away to make one the primary, and the, this whip seems to be doing very good. It's got a lot of new growth, so hopefully in another uh, five years or so, we'll have a tree that uh, will be as beautiful as that one and produce some more Zestire apples. This tree here that's got just a few blossoms on it, this is a Macown apple. It's a, that's a, it's a relative of the Macintosh. It's got similar, similar characteristics. It's got a few blossoms on it. This is the first time it's had any blossoms. It's a relatively young tree. I think it's four years old, but it's coming along. This tree here that doesn't have any blossoms on it right now, last week was all flowered out. This is a sweet cherry tree. And so its period of pollination is over, or pretty much there's a few flowers up there, but she's winding down. So hopefully, Hopefully we'll have a good crop of cherries. I see some little ones here, but we'll find out in another couple weeks. Uh, we'll see the cherries start to develop. But right next to it, this is another cherry tree. This is a pie cherry and it is just loaded and the bees have been loving this, this tree. Uh, it must produce quite a fair, pretty good amount of nectar because there's a, usually quite a few honey bees and, and bumblebees working this, this tree. This one here is uh, Red Rome Beauty, and its blossoms are just getting ready to open. So this is a later variety of apple. So the, I've got three types of apples here, early, mid-season, and late season, this being a late season variety. And so hopefully there'll be enough 
other apple blossoms still remaining so that we'll have some pollination here because this, this has got a few days yet before it's going to open, but they're, they're getting ready to pop. This cluster of trees here are vari several varieties of plum tree. They're young yet. Uh, they're about three years old. They're loaded with blossoms. Uh, I see it, uh, the, the, my honeybees don't work these blossoms very much, and uh, so I'm not sure if they don't produce much nectar or what, but uh, uh, there are a lot of blossoms. They are close together, so hopefully, uh, hopefully there'll be enough pollination that we'll get a plum or two this year. This apple tree here I planted a couple years ago. It's young, it's too young to produce fruit yet, so there are no blossoms on it, but it's coming along nice. And this, this one here, part of, part of its name is Seek No Further Apple. Because apparently, it, you know, the person that found it 100 years ago, so it was the best apple we've ever, ever tasted. So Seek No Further Apple. So I'm anxious to, anxious to try that. And then you can see my, my chickens working uh, around the apple trees. So the uh, soil there is pretty, pretty rich and it has a lot of angleworms and they, they enjoy looking for angleworms. I've got a patch of rhubarb planted next to, to this apple tree. And finally, we've got three trees in a cluster over here. These are my pear trees and they were all flowered out earlier. Uh, most of the blossoms have gone by now, and we'll, we'll see if we have any fruit set. Last year we had one little pear set, so uh, this year here there were quite a few more blossoms and, and a longer period of, of bloom, so hopefully we'll have some fruit set. So that kind of concludes your orchard tour. Hope you enjoyed it. And again, uh, if, you could, if you have dealt with the woolly aphid in your orchard, you could put in your comments in the comment section how you dealt with them. I'd appreciate it. Um, looking, looking for some some guidance because they're 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 a bugger uh, and uh, uh, they really can do some do some damage to your trees. So thanks for watching, and we'll talk again soon.